do begin with an update on that breaking news we've been following the death of a firefighter and a community in mourning. Dan Kennedy is live now in Lawrenceburg where a news conference was just held. Dan. Vicki, we've just learned that firefighter Jason Dickey was an 11 year career veteran uh, of the Lawrenceburg Fire Department and he lost his life last night. This is a small close knit fire department, about two dozen firefighters. Firefighter Jason Dickey pictured right here, uh, killed last night in this fire and several others were also injured, including uh, firefighter Kendall Sherrill, who remains in the ICU at this time. Also injured were firefighters John Brewer and Captain Brian Green and also a captain with the new Prospect Fire Department, who's expected to be released a little later today. We have some brand new video from Sky 5 overhead uh, of this home on Hood Lakes Road. The fire call actually came out at about 4.30 yesterday afternoon. Fire crews arrived on the scene. It was an elderly couple inside who managed to get out. Uh, and then at, by 8 o'clock last night, as they continued to battle this blaze, the May Day call came in, firefighters worst fear. Within 10 minutes later, uh, we learned that a roof had collapsed, trapping several of those firefighters inside. Within 10 minutes later, they were extricated and taken to a hospital where firefighter Jason Dickey was pronounced dead and several others hospitalized. We talked to a man who helped rescue the elderly couple from that burning home. And in an emotional news conference that ended just minutes ago, we also heard from some of Jason's colleagues. We lost a hero. We've lost a man that saved several lives in his 11 year career. Uh, literally out of creeks, fires, and different calls we've had. He's a faithful member of this fire department. He loved his job and he loved what he did. Today this department's hurting. Today these men are hurting. And today they need your support and we thank you for your prayers. Firefighters are a tight knit, knit, you know, family. They're all family. Uh, and it just, that was one of their men that got lost last night, and they'll all feel that. And I, I hate it for them, and I hate it for the family for sure. Uh, they certainly are feeling it this morning. It was an emotional news conference here at the Lawrenceburg Fire Department where now a flag flies at half staff in honor of firefighter Jason Dickey, who, by the way, leaves behind a wife who is pregnant and expecting a child in just a few weeks. Also leaves behind a 16 year old daughter, a son who's 11 years old and a daughter who is two years old. I also want to talk about the close knit fire community and really the close knit Lawrenceburg community in general. This entire parking lot was full of supporters for that news conference here rallying around Jason's family. And I also want to talk about all these fire departments who came in to assist with the Lawrenceburg Fire Department overnight while they were busy mourning the loss of one of their own firefighters from places like Spring Hill. Murfreesboro, Laverne, Rutherford County, you name it, all came in to help answer 911 calls that Lawrenceburg was unable to do overnight. It is going to be a tough day for this community as this is only the second firefighter ever to die in the line of duty in Lawrenceburg. And we're going to have continued coverage throughout the day, the loss of firefighter Jason Dickey and the recovery of those other firemen who were also injured last night. Reporting live in Lawrenceburg, Dan Kennedy, News Channel 5. That story, Dan, thank you. And a horrible discovery for a young girl as she walks into a hermitage home to find her uncle shot to death. Police believe a burglar ransacked Marvin Hughes' home on Misty Cape Cove after coming in through an unlocked door. Neighbors told police they heard a loud banging sound around 10 or 11 yesterday morning that they believe was a gunshot. Officers say Hughes' niece found him shot to death in the home around 345 in the afternoon. If you saw anything that can help investigators, call Crime Stoppers at 615-742-7463. Until this season, most of us just thought of the flu as a temporary nuisance, but now it's continuing to take its toll in lives. According to the CDC, more than 17,000 people have been hospitalized across the country as the result of the flu, and even more shocking, 
Many of those deaths are children who died from the complications of flu. And as we know ourselves, area school systems are shutting down so teachers and students can stay home and get well. Locally, we know of one hospital that had so many children sick that they're using emergency rooms as temporary inpatient rooms. Again, doctors can't stress enough that if you haven't received your flu shot, it's not too late. And if you do have the symptoms, don't go to work or school and spread the germs and the virus. Go to a medical office instead and and get treated. It was a cold day, but the hottest couple in the country made it all worthwhile. Britain's Prince Harry and his American bride-to-be Meghan Markle made an official joint visit to Scotland's capital city of Edinburgh. Crowds waited hours in the cold to catch a glimpse of the smiling couple. Harry and Meghan visited Social Bike Cafe, a charity that runs coffee shops and delivers food to the homeless. The eatery has attracted visits from Hollywood stars like actors George Clooney and Leonardo DiCaprio.